Good morning again. I'm Claudio Guarnaccia from University of Salerno, and uh, uh, I am Associate Professor of Applied Physics in the Civil Engineering Department. My work is mainly uh, about uh, uh, acoustics, mostly on noise control, but we have a research with the Structural Engineering Lab uh, about ultrasound uh, techniques to uh, to make diagnosis or to monitor uh, structural elements. And today I will present, uh, uh, actually this is the third paper of a, a line, uh, of, a, of the research line. Two of them were presented in Venice in June in the APSAC conference. Today I will present uh, the third paper that is about the classification of the cracks using the acoustic emission techniques uh, during a four-point bending test on a reinforced concrete beam. So you may see the list of co-authors, and I can start if it moves, okay. The summary of my presentation is highlighted here, and uh, um, I will give a short introduction, motivation, motivation of the study. And uh, I will uh, then present the experimental setup and the results of the crack classification. And finally, the conclusions. Starting from the introduction, let me say that uh, the problem of uh, old buildings is somehow very frequent, at least in Europe. We have a uh, ancient uh, construction uh, um, patrimony and uh, it is very common that these buildings are subject to several external agents. So we have problems with concrete, problems with uh, steel in the reinforcement, problems with masonry for the even older buildings. And usually all these uh, items on the left, the loads, the fatigue, the environmental agents, cause the, the deterioration of the structure. So. The idea of this research that comes from a kind of tradition is to make structural health monitoring by using uh, acoustic techniques, in particular by using acoustic emission, ultrasound acoustic emission techniques. So we produce the damage during a lab controlled test and we uh, recognize the waves, we analyze the data, the signals and we give output of, uh, according to what we, what is the study we are looking at. So the motivation are in this part of our research, we are working mostly, we are thinking about applying this technique to bridges, in particular to pre-stressed concrete bridge, uh, because you maybe remember that in Italy we had a collapse uh, in Genova, the big, uh, uh, the big bridge of uh, uh, Morandi, Ponte Morandi, that collapsed uh, during the operation. And uh, so it's a very popular uh, and important uh, research at this stage in Italy. And uh, the idea is to uh, merge the acoustic emission technique with other, tem other sensors, such as temperature, wind speed, strain gauge, in order to have non-invasive detection of, dam of possible damage starting from the microscopic level and then localization and then follow up. So the basic idea of this, uh, of this study is to start from the structure or the infrastructure, in this case, the bridge. Usually once one wants to start from the original design and if available from previous tests, that have, has, has been, have been uh, performed on the, the structure. And of course, a visual inspection in order to uh, identify possible uh, critical uh, elements. Then uh, the study of the materials is very important in order to uh, resume the original features of the materials, then to compare with the real conditions and the real conditions affect the propagation speed of the waves of the acoustic waves inside the material. Then we have the the uh, part, the, uh, the, the, the acoustic emission uh, equipment part. So once one, ha one have to 
select the sensors. That uh, depends, of course, on the materials, on the background noise, and on the analysis that we want, want to, to, uh, to perform. And for instance, in this picture, you may see a high frequency sensor, ultrasound sensor, and a low frequency, this is a, a, some uh, piezoelectric sensors. Then the sensors must be installed, and uh, this is a very critical part because it follows the uh, propagation study because you want that the sensors communicate each other in order to make the triangulation and to have the chance to localize the damages. And uh, um, in this phase, it's very important to have a good acoustic coupling between the sensor and the surface of the material. And this is quite often a problem because concrete not always, it sometimes is raw and uh, you have difficulties in attaching the sensor on the concrete. It's on steel, it's much more easier because steel is more homogeneous. You don't have problems of concrete. And then uh, this is just to comment the picture, but the final part is the validation. So each sensor must be tested and then the, uh, the communication between sensors must be validated with ev event uh, detection. Once this stage is performed, you can start the acquisition and the elaboration of the data. So according to the best environmental conditions, you can select the loading protocols that can be uh, increasing load or can be cyclic load uh, and so on, according to the parameters that you want to study. And uh, once you analyze the data, you can localize the defects or the damages and you can follow up with more inspections and tests. So about the acoustic emission, uh, this is a typical spike of an acoustic emission detected by our sensors. And uh, in the different colors are means different parameters of the acoustic signal. Uh, so we have the, tree, the threshold that is fixed according to the background noise in order to separate background from signal. Then you have the trigger, that is the first threshold surpassing, the maximum amplitude of the signal, the duration time from the first to the last uh, threshold surpassing, the rising time from the first to the maximum first uh, surpassing to the maximum maximum amplitude and the counts these uh, red uh, dots that are uh, the number of times the signal passes the, the threshold finally the integral of the envelope of the signal is the energy we, of the of the event the, the signal the heat what we will call it heat Going to the classification, in order to classify an acoustic emission signal, uh, two more parameters that are actually the combination of what we saw in the previous slide have been introduced in literature. And they are the rise time over the maximum amplitude called rise angle and the average frequency that is the number of counts over the duration time. So uh, according to these two parameters, you can plot the, the two values of each heat of acoustic emission. And if the heat comes above this bisector, that is not really a bisector because you may see that there is a different scale. Anyway, if it is in, if you have high average frequency and low rise angle values, you are dealing with tensile racks if you have high rise angle values and low average frequency, you are dealing with shear cracks. The axis ratios are actually is a critical parameter because in literature there is no evidence of uh, um, the best uh, number to be used. Some in, in concrete, very often the, the ratio is one. So you, we have a bisector in that case. And also in our application, we will find this ratio. This is another slide to show uh, what, are, what we were talking about before. So when we have um, uh, when, when we have high average frequency and low um, time, we have tensile cracks that are usually um, related to axial uh, uh, axial stress. 
so uh, that they can be tensile but also compress compression and uh, when we have um, high res angle and low average frequency we are dealing with shear cracks so we are moving in the experimental part this is these are pictures of the equipment we have in our lab in the university of salerno and uh, in particular the equipment comes from Vallen company uh, that is uh, one of the most important in uh, in the world uh, together with uh, i think a greek uh, company i don't remember mistras is a greek company and uh, uh, they provide sensors and readout electronics in this case this uh, uh, case and uh, in, uh, we used three uh, what we call high frequency um, resonant sensors in fact this is the frequency response of the sensors and we have a peak at the 150 um, kilohertz and the distance between the sensors is has been fixed in 50 centimeters uh, from each other and this is this has been fixed after performing an analysis a test uh, with um, on the concrete to see the propagation of the waves so in the up uh, part of the slide you may see the sketch of the the, the beam the concrete beam uh, with the, uh, the, the specimen features uh, about the concrete and the, the reinforcements and this is the picture of the beam before uh, the loading test uh, start. And we also put some strain gauge and, uh, uh, to check also the displacement of the beam. And in this part of the slide, in the bottom right, you can see the, the pictures of the beam after, uh, at, at the end of the test. I just want to highlight and to point out your uh, attention on this asymmetric uh, uh, failure of the beam because this will be detected by our signals much in advance with respect to the failure so in the results i will start presenting results that comes from the previous papers as i mentioned and they were presented in uh, venice uh, one month ago approximately so in in black uh, the black line is the load uh, the load um, curve, and as, as you may see, it's a monotonic increasing uh, load curve. And uh, we highlighted 30%, 60%, 90%, and 100% of the maximum load uh, experienced by the beam. On the same plot with a second axis, uh, we plot the cumulative heat curves for each sensor. So. Um, how you, uh, is it, it is very easy to notice that the green curve related to channel two in the middle, uh, as you may see here, channel one blue is on the left, channel uh, the, the, the two is in the middle and three is on the right. Channel two has the maximum number of hits at the end of the, of the test, but looking at uh, the first stage of the, of the load, we can see that both the number two and number three are running much higher than number one. And this is somehow what I mentioned before about the asymmetry of the, of the specimen. And also the, uh, the software provided by Vallen company uh, allows to uh, perform a localization analysis in real time and also a clusterization of the cracks uh, so you you can see that uh, at 60% uh, of the maximum load, so we are speaking about this part of the test, we already noticed that most of the events came in the right part of the beam. So you have the X location on the, on the X axis, uh, suggesting that the beam was about to fail in an asymmetric way. And this was confirmed at maximum load with most of the events with higher amplitude in the right part of the beam. The new results are uh, start from here. And we, uh, as I mentioned before, we are classifying tensile cracks and shear cracks according to the average frequency and rise angle parameters. 
and uh, you can see overlap the three sensors. Uh, it's recorded at the 30% in this slide of the maximum load. It is very, very easy to notice that the blue points are most gathered above the bisector of this plot, uh, suggesting that channel one that is on the left of the, of the beam experience more tensile cracks with respect to uh, shear cracks. And, uh, and moving, uh, moving in the second uh, uh, slide, this is even more, uh, even more evident. And also it's evident that channel two and channel three, I go back one slide just to let you see the red and green points that are increasing in this area. They uh, detect both tensile and shear crack according to the position and also to the damage that is occurring in the beam. Because basically, I just go back to the picture. The shear um, is in the middle of the two bending points, we have a constant momentum. So you expect mostly the tensile cracks in the bottom of the beam and the shear cracks on the sides. But as, you, as we noticed on the left, we didn't have much tensile, uh, sorry, shear cracks because of this asymmetry. So we were already somehow predicting that the beam was about to fail in this way at the 60% of the maximum load. And the last uh, slide is 90%. That just to confirm what I was mentioning before. So this is 60 and this is 90, just an increasing of the X uh, in both, in both, because at the end of the stage, at the end of the test, you have both tensile, you have shear on the sides when the momentum uh, decreases. And you have also, at, at the very end of the test, you have also compression cracks coming from the bending of the beam and on the top of the, the concrete is start to compress and to, to spool up. This is a, a, just a resume to see the evolution of the damage over time and the, uh, as a function of the, uh, the percentage of the maximum load, just to confirm once more that channel one actually doesn't detect that much of shear cracks because of this asymmetry. So in conclusions, the idea is that the um, acoustic emission collection and analysis can uh, correlate the damage of the structure with the signals uh, detected uh, during the lab test or hopefully also in real case studies, because this is the very big challenge to bring these uh, tests from lab to real case study and to uh, real operating structures. The um, position of the sensor is crucial to localize the damages in order to have the good communication between sensors according to the materials condition that affects, as I mentioned before, the speed, the propagation speed of the waves inside the material. The classification of the heats permits to uh, identify which kind of solicitation have been experienced by the structure up to that stage. And it's a quite a good, uh, an interesting uh, parameter and an interesting analysis to perform follow-up in, in invest investigation. Uh, as uh, I said already at the beginning, the parameter setting, the setting parameters is very important and the choice is very important in order to properly and correctly evaluate the events. The threshold is crucial because you may be in a very noisy environment. Think about the bridges with the, the road traffic operating with heavy vehicles uh, passing by. This is very a noisy environment, not only in the sonic, in the uh, hearing frequencies, but also in the ultrasound. Uh, and uh, uh, the average frequencies versus rise angles plot uh, ratio, as I mentioned, uh, this influences the classification, of course, because you can change the, uh, the, the, the ratio. And uh, um, in literature, as I mentioned, we found uh, several, some studies, actually not that much, stating that uh, concrete can be one or can be 10, this ratio, 
In our case, the results were very good with one. And uh, finally, this is also a future step. Uh, still, we need to find a consensus about a protocol for application on real structures. Let me underline, I didn't sell, uh, tell this at the beginning, that this research is funded by the Consortium of Structural Engineering Labs in Italy and is aimed at trying to define guidelines for the application of this technique to bridges in pre-stressed concrete, uh, but also in steel. Uh, so it's still a challenging uh, task to, to find a proper uh, protocol that can be applied anywhere uh, uh, with a, a reasonable uh, uh, robustness of the test. So this is what we, are, we, we hope we'll do in the next uh, stage of this research. So I thank you very much. And